For the past half century, the intriguing possibility of traveling to Mars in a spaceship has challenged the imagination of many men. Rocket ships of all sizes and shapes have been designed, but most of them rely on an enormous consumption of chemical fuel to escape the pull of the Earth's gravity. A spaceship using an electromagnetic drive to neutralize gravity is the obvious answer. But such a device is still a dream for the future. However, at the present time, an atomic-powered spaceship has been suggested by a leading scientist in the rocket and guided missile field, Dr. Ernst Stuhlinger, who for some years has been working closely with the rocket engineer, Dr. Werner von Braun. This atomic electric spaceship features a revolutionary new principle that will make possible the long trip to Mars with only a small expenditure of fuel. Parts for the spaceship will be brought up to an orbit by conventional chemical fuel rockets. It will then be assembled in the vacuum of space. This unusual ship will be 500 feet across and will carry a small landing craft for the final descent to the Martian surface. Located at the bottom is a small atomic reactor which furnishes a continuous supply of heat. This heat turns silicon oil into steam. After rising up a central pipe, the steam drives a turbo generator which produces electricity to run the ship. The steam is condensed in a giant circular cooler and used over and over again. In the thrust chamber, a platinum grid is electrically charged. The metallic element cesium is vaporized and blown through the white-hot grid. This ionizes the cesium atoms and they are then electrically blasted out into space at the rate of billions per second. This thrust pushes the ship in the opposite direction. The atomic electric spaceship can operate continuously for a period of years. At the top of the ship, away from the dangerous atomic reactor, is cargo space and quarters for a crew of 20 men. Mounted outside on the thrust chamber assembly is the auxiliary landing craft. When our ship reaches Mars, the landing craft will be released, carrying men and supplies to the planet's surface. A drag chute will gradually slow the landing craft as it streaks into the Martian atmosphere. A few seconds before touching down, the main rocket motors will be fired and the craft will land gently on its nose. Later, the exploration party can return to the mothership by blasting off in the tail section of the landing craft. Here is the plan for our trip to Mars. It will take 13 months and six days. Starting 1,000 miles above the Earth, the spaceship will slowly accelerate for four months before escaping the Earth's gravity. For the next seven months, the ship will follow a curved path, finally entering the gravitational field of Mars. An additional two months will be spent spiraling in to a circular orbit 620 miles above the Martian surface. the space station, our journey begins. The expedition is comprised of six ships. Time, a few minutes before departure. Final checks are being completed. zero hour, the thrust chambers are fired. We are underway. Our fleet climbs beyond the space station, beginning its outward spiral around the Earth. speed is increasing steadily.
After four months and 17 days, 850,000 miles out, the expedition finally escapes the Earth's gravity. At six months, 14 days, our speed has increased to 75,000 miles per hour. Mars is steadily increasing in size. The halfway point has been reached. The thrust chambers are reversed. Deceleration begins. The Earth grows smaller. At seven months, 24 days, crew members witness a spectacular passage of the Earth across the face of the sun. Three months later, the expedition is 700,000 miles above Mars, and the 45-day spiral in toward the planet has begun. Now, for the first time, the tiny Martian moons Deimos and Phobos are visible to the unaided eye. As we move to within 4,000 miles of Mars, we get a close-up view of the moon Phobos. After 13 months and six days, our voyage to Mars is finally completed. The ships are orbiting 620 miles above the surface of the planet. Before exploration begins, test missiles are fired to sample the strange new atmosphere. Now the first landing craft is moved into position to attempt the hazardous 600-mile drop to the Martian surface. This is a crucial moment. man finally walks upon the sands of Mars, what will confront him in this mysterious new world? Will any of his conceptions of strange and exotic Martian life prove to be true? Will he find the remains of a long dead civilization? Or will the more conservative opinions of present day science be borne out with the discovery of a cold and barren planet where only a low form of vegetable life struggles to survive. These questions will be answered by our space pioneers of the future. In solving the enigma of the red planet Mars, man may find a key that opens the first small door to the universe. Carried forward on the wings of modern science, man in the years that follow may discover the miracle of life as it exists in all its countless forms throughout an infinite creation.